Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop. My call sign is G4NSJ, Golf 4 November Sierra Juliet. Right, and I do quite a bit of work on the amateur bands, um, and I use a doublet aerial, basically for the 5 meg frequencies for uh, 40 meters, 20 meters, for the higher frequency bands, 10 meters, 12 meters, 15 meters, I use a vertical. But I want to, uh, let's talk about the doublet, okay? First of all, let, let's talk about an ordinary dipole fed with coax. Uh, so you want to work on 40 meters. You want to put up a 40 meter dipole. Um, you don't want an ATU, okay? So you feed it with coax. Uh, what you do, 40 meters is say seven megs to 7.2 megs. That's what it is in the UK. Um, so let's take the middle of the band, cut your aerial for the middle, 7.1 megs. So the magic number is 468. 468 divided by 7.1 will give you just about 66 feet, 65.9 feet, okay? So that is the overall length of your dipole. That's the, the two arms, the overall length, 66 feet. Now the thing to do, cut that a little bit longer, like make it 67, whatever, a bit more than that perhaps. Connect your coax to the middle, inner and outer, doesn't matter which way round, inner and outer, inner to one, outer to the other bring that down to your radio through a, an SWR meter. Uh, okay, check the SWR. If it's a little bit high, which it probably will be, we've made the area a bit longer. A uh, bit of a palaver, I know, but cut a couple of inches off each end. Two inches off that end of the aerial, two inches off that end of the aerial. Try it again. SWR's come down a bit, say 1.2 to 1. Cut a little bit more off, another inch or two off, and you'll find that you eventually get, on 7.1 megs in the middle of the band, your SWR is one to one. It'll creep up a bit towards the edges of the band, the lower edge and the upper edge of the band. Basically, what you've then got is a 40 metre dipole, fed with coax, no need for an aerial tuning unit. Right, try to use that aerial on, say, 20 metres. SWR will be through the roof, it'll be mental. Okay, big problems. What do you do? <laughs> what a lot of people do, and I'm surprised at how many people do this, down in the shack where the aerial comes in, the coax comes in, they put it into an ATU, then a bit more coax from the ATU into the radio. And they say, oh yeah, but it loads up, SWR goes one to one, it's brilliant. Well, the mismatch, this is where the thinking all goes wrong, the coax is 50 ohms, the radio is 50 ohms. Okay, so they match. You don't need an ATU there, that matches already. The mismatch is up where the coax meets the aerial, meets the centre of the aerial. The aerial on 20 metres, now remember it's cut for um, 40 metres, on other bands, whichever band, it might be 200 ohms, 500 ohms feed impedance in the middle of the dipole, and your coax is 50 ohms. That is where the mismatch is, not down in your shack. That's not where it is, it's up there. 50 ohm coax meeting the feed point on the area, which is say 500 ohms. That's where the ATU needs to be, like on a 30 foot pole or whatever, up in the middle of your aerial. Well, you can't, that's not very practical. I suppose you could have one of these automatic ATUs up there, but it's all a bit of a nightmare. I mean, swinging from the middle of your aerial. So what, what do we do? What's the way round that? Um, one way round it, the best way, is to, you've got your same dipole, you've worked it out for your 40 metre amateur band, you've put up your 66 feet, feed it with 300 ohm ribbon. All right, the balance line, the balance feeder, 300, I use 300 ohm because it's neat, you can use 450 ohm, 600 ohm, whatever you like. Make your own wide space stuff if you want. I like the 300 ohm, the ladder line as it's called. It's neat, it works well. It's not heavy, you don't have to worry about it flapping about too much. Okay, feed your middle of your dipole with that. Bring that into the shack, into a balanced ATU, all right, a properly balanced ATU. They are available, was it MFJ, whatever. I use the KW107, uh, which is an old, was it 1960s? aerial tuning unit, it's lovely. Okay, so 
have a look at the diagram here. This is your dipole, all right, fed with the, the 300 ohm like that. Very straightforward. And what you do, you bring that into the into the shack, into the, the terminals on the ATU, the input, the balanced input on the ATU. You then obviously adjust your ATU for minimum SWR. You should get one to one. Great. Now go to 20 meters. Adjust the ATU again and you'll get your one to one SWR. And that aerial will work really well on 20 meters. In fact, okay, we've set it up for seven megs. It'll work on eight megs, nine megs, 10 megs. It'll work all these places. It'll work up on um, 28 megs, on 10 meters, if you want it to. I mean, as I say, I prefer a vertical up at those frequencies. It'll work on uh, 18 megs. It'll work on 21 megs. Uh, you know, 12 meters, what's that? 24, 25 megs around there. It's not a one band aerial anymore. And all you've done is take the coax off it, which made it a, a single band aerial, feed it with ribbon, the 300 ohm ribbon, into a proper ATU in the shack. And it's an all band aerial. Well, I say all band. If you want it to cover 80 meters, yeah, all right, it'll load. Um, it'll load up on 80 and it will work. It won't be brilliant because it's a bit short. It's what, 66 feet, uh, 80 meters, uh, half wave dipole is what, 132? So if you can lengthen it, your dipole to 132 or, or a bit more, um, then great, it'll work on 80, 40, 20. It'd be really good, a really good dipole that you can use also on other frequencies. I use the five meg frequencies, uh, you know, the mili military frequencies that we've been allocated in the UK and some other countries around the world. What I've done, people say to me, how long is your dipole? What have you cut it for? I haven't. I haven't cut it for anything. I had in my, in my available space about 98 feet between the poles and a pole in the middle. About 98 feet overall. So I fitted the dipole in that space. I didn't work it out and say, oh, well, I'm going to use it on seven megs, so I need 66 feet. You fit in the amount you can get in. Um, as it happens, mine is, is resonant on about 4.9 megs, I think. I can't remember now, something like that. Um, so it's a little bit long for five megs, but it loads beautifully. You want it a little bit longer, I find. Uh, it aids with the, the loading up on the ATU. So people then say to me, a chap the other day, for example, he rang, a friend of mine, got great design for a doublet. Said, right, design, okay, well it's dipole and a bit of 300 ohm feeder. All right, call it a design if you want, a few bits of wire. He said, only I've got a major problem. Said, yeah, what's the problem? He said, well, I got it up 40 feet. I managed to get the dipole bit up 40 feet. And he said, the feeder is something like 10 feet, it ends 10 feet above the ground. And I said, yeah, I'm not with you. What are you talking about? Why cut it off? Oh, well, he said, uh, each length of the, the dipole has got to be 30 feet in this design. That bit's 30, that's 30. So overall, it's 60, uh, 60 feet. He said, so that means that the feed has got to be 30. Uh, why? He said, well, that's what the design said. I, I said, forget all that. Forget all that nonsense. He said, well, how long is your feeder? I said, the length of mine is from the middle of the dipole, comes down about six feet above the ground, then about 50 feet long into the house where the radio is. So it's what, 50, you know, 70, 80 feet, whatever. I don't know, I've measured it. The length is between the aerial and where I need it. That is the length I've used. He said, oh, no, but the design says, no, forget the design. There's so much bad information around on the internet. You know, it's ridiculous. Imagine, you right, it says use 30 feet of feeder. Right, you've got a 100 foot tower if you're lucky enough to have one of those. Well, hang on, your feeder ends 70 feet up in there. What are you meant to do? Use your, your radio 70 feet up your aerial tower? <laughs> of course you're not. You bring it down your 100 feet or whatever, then along into your shack. What the G5RV does 
it's, it is a certain length of 300 ohm feeder, then goes to coax into the shack. Now that is all carefully worked out, so you don't need an ATU. You can use it, for example, on 80, 40, 20 meters. You can switch bands, and it's all worked out, so you don't need an ATU. Well, that's to me, that's daft. Why not use 300 ohm ribbon in the first place, straight into an ATU? That way, not only if you've got 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, you got five megs, six megs, seven megs, eight megs, nine megs. I listen on the broadcast bands on shortwave and to the HF uh, communication aircraft going across the Atlantic. They're on what, 11 megs, they're various frequencies. What I do, I mean, obviously I don't load up the transmitter on, on the area with the transmitter. I tune the ATU for maximum receive noise. Um, then I've got an aerial which is is perfect for 11 megs or whatever I'm on. It doesn't. It's not an amateur band only aerial. So, <coughs> I mean, don't worry too much about the theory. You know, let's not get involved with, uh, oh yeah, well this length and that length and this impedance and that impedance, all that nonsense. Put up your dipole as whatever you can fit in. You know, if you can fit in 66 feet, it'll still work on on the five meg frequencies. You know, that, that'd be fine for seven megs upwards. So, you know, uh, that's 40 meters. It'll work on 20 meters and the rest up to 10 meters. Probably even work on six meters. Okay. So fit in the length, you, you know, whatever your garden will allow. Right. Feed it with 300 ohm ribbon, the ladder line. All right. Don't worry, don't measure that. Right, no good measuring that. Bring it into your house, your shack, or wherever. No good measuring it because you'll find it. Oh, I'm 20 feet too short. It won't reach the radio. What I do, I'm going to go and sit out in the middle of the lawn with my radio because it won't come into the house. Nonsense. The only right. This is where length does affect things. You will find, as I did, I set all mine up. What I did was I made the feeder comes into the into where the radio is. I made it about six feet too long. The 300 ohm feeder, about six feet too long. I loaded up on each of the bands I want to use, and it was fine. I forget which band it was. One band it wouldn't load quite well. It, it wasn't quite right. It wouldn't load properly. Couldn't get the SWR one to one. So what you do is chop a foot or two off your feeder, your 300 ohm feeder. Cut a feet a foot or two off that back in the ATU, try again, probably find it'll work then, it'll load on that band. Check the other bands, make sure they're all okay. You might need to cut another foot off, you know, see, if you've cut too much off, add a bit on, doesn't matter. It's only two wires, isn't it, the feed like that. Solder them back together, make a good joint, just take that up, you can add a bit on. There's not going to be any mismatch there, it's fine. Do that, you'll probably find that when you set it all up, it loads up on all the bands you want anyway. Um, it's just if you're unlucky and you've got a length of feeder that is just a bit critical on one band, as I say, cut a foot or two off, cut three feet off, see what happens. Yeah, don't be afraid. Get your cutters out. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that that is why they sell so many feet of feeder because it's worked out that that will load up on each band. That's all very well, but if your feeder's like ending 30 feet up in the air, you can't use your aerial, as I say, unless you build a scaffold tower and make your shack up there. Not many people have got shacks 30 feet in the air on top of a scaffold tower. Not a good idea. Okay, so that's, that's that so far. Um, any length of dipole, as much as you can fit in, if you can fit in 130, 140 feet, then your doublet's going to work brilliantly on 80 meters. If you can fit in like 260, you've got a top band doublet. Wow, lovely. DX, excellent. Okay, so that's it. Fit in your dipole to whatever area you've got, in my case, 98 feet. Use whatever length of feeder you need to get from your aerial coming down along the fence, into the house, into your shed, wherever, to your ATU. Doesn't matter what length that is, as I say, mine's about 80 feet. Okay, and that is your setup. You've got a, a doublet that you can use on all frequencies. Right, so far so good. Just made a couple of notes here. Uh, 
I've been you know, to other people's shacks and they said, oh, well, I've got the ATU at the end of the coax and look, they load up, that no, works, so SWR, one to one. You could load up a six inch nail on 160 meters. If you've got a decent enough ATU, you can load up that and get one to one SWR. Six inch nail as an aerial on, on 160 meters is going to be, vir well, useless, completely useless, not virtually useless. You can load up a bucket of water on the ground stick your end of your coax in that, decent ATU, you'll load that up, SWRs one to one. Your bucket of water is not going to be much of an aerial. So, you know, these people that say, oh look, see, you're wrong, it works, you can have ATU at the end of the coax. Well, you can, it'll match the radio, it'll save wrecking the PA stage on your transmitter, I suppose, because the transmitter will see one to one SWR. But I dread to think what's happening on, on the coax, on the 50 ohm coax. Um, yeah, also with a dipole fed with coax, the coax will tend to radiate. It does that. You don't want that radiating your signal. So a couple of things you can do, either coil it up, sort of six inch diameter coil of coax, just, what, just blow the aerial. Uh, that'll help to choke off the RF. Um, or oh, it makes me laugh, some of these aerials you buy, it says, uh, with with line isolator line isolator what's a line isolator basically it's a ferrite ring just below where it connects to the aerial ferrite ring around the coax it just chokes off any or helps to choke off any uh, rf that might come down the coax the outer of the coax line isolator goodness me whatever don't buy aerials they're bits of wire you don't need to buy bits of wire all put together for exorbitant prices um Right, what else? I mentioned aerials uh, on a, a video I made recently. Some chap said, no, 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 you don't want that. You want a vertical aerial like I've got. The aerial I was talking about was for listening to European stations um, on, on 6 megs. Uh, what is it? 60, 6095, is it? I can't, I forget the frequency now. Uh, the one that transmits in Europe is 100 kilowatts. Uh, they're on weekends with uh, Emperor Roscoe, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's great, it's great, it's perfectly legal. It's great. And I was saying to people, you know, to, to receive that, put up a dipole, I went into all that. And he said, no, no, you want a vertical. No, you don't. <laughs> I know what I want, and I don't want a vertical. A vertical aerial, a pole, is ideal for low angle radiation stuff. If I want to listen to stuff coming in from America, bear in mind I'm in the UK, that's going to come in at a low angle from the ionosphere, low angle like that, and hit my aerial. Okay, and verticals are best for low angle stuff. A horizontal dipole is best for more up here stuff. So the European station I want to listen to, his signal is going up to the ionosphere and down. Right? It, it's not, it is going that way as well, but it's going right over my head like that. So, no, I don't want a vertical aerial unless I want to listen to real, real far away stations like America. Um, okay, so I think that about sums it up. There's one thing that, uh, one question that some of you will be asking, and that is how come the 300 ohm feeder, right, which doesn't radiate, by the way, it's because it's balanced, it's like self cancelling, it cancels out any, any radiation. But how come 300 ohm feeder meeting the, the dipole in the middle there, that feed point, when the dipole might be 100 ohms, 50 ohms, 500 ohms, how come that mismatch doesn't muck things up then, if the coax does? Right, I must admit I don't understand this fully myself. What happens is, power goes up the feeder to that mismatch at the aerial, right? Some of it goes into the aerial, some comes back down, it's reflected back to the ATU. That ATU puts it back in phase, shoves it back up the feeder. Is that, is that a technical expression? Shoves it back up the feeder, that'll do, you know what I mean? Where it then, it, it goes out again. And it, what happens is it does all this business, like Magnus Magnuson now, <laughs> gesticulating, and it all goes out of the feeder. Um, coax is lossy. You can incur losses, especially if you've got, like I would have to have here, about 80 odd feet of it. Um, balanced feeder isn't lossy, it's good stuff, you don't get losses, especially if, if you go to 450 ohm and then even the wider 
uh, like 600 ohm stuff, but 300 is fine. Um, so it, yeah, it doesn't radiate, it's not lossy. It'll, the whole doublet idea is brilliant for all bands. Um, mine, although it's only about 98 feet, it does load up on 80 meters. I use it on 80 meters. It's far too short because it wants to be about 132 overall. Um, but it does work on 80. It's not brilliant, but you know, for having a chat to people and you know, in the UK, it's a pretty good aerial. So you know, if you're limited for space, then uh, yeah, don't worry. You can still use 80 meters. Okay, I think that's about it. There will be people that email me and say, oh, you haven't accounted for this. You haven't mentioned velocity factor. You haven't said this, that and the other. No, we don't want to get into all that. We don't want to get bogged down with mathematics. We want to put up an aerial that's going to work pretty well, very well, on, on the amateur bands we want to use. Um, and that, that's what the doublet does. You know, get it up as high as you can. Get the, the length in. Bring your feeder down, don't start measuring that, bring that down into the shack. Off you go, Bob's your uncle, <laughs> whoever he is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I was going to show you a picture of my ATU, but there's no point. It's a KW107. Uh, so, uh, as I say, the MFJ, any, any ATU you can use, it's got a balanced input. That's all you need. Don't use the ATU at the shack end of your coax. If you've got that sort of set up, get rid of it now and start again. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.